Okay, so welcome to this next video in uh, the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. In this video, what we want to talk about is uh, the antibiotic, the synthetic antibiotic, which is trimethoprim, uh, which is uh, a pretty foul antibiotic, but it's very effective. And it's basically under the category of anti-metabolite antibiotics. And I'll explain exactly what that means. Uh, it basically means uh, that it's going to stop you from being able to produce a certain uh, molecule, a certain metabolite. Um, and that metabolite is essential for you being able to make, um, well, in this case, it's going to be essential for you to be able to make uh, one of the nucleotides which you need to make DNA. It's specifically going to stop you from being able to make uh, deoxythymidine monophosphate. And uh, in order to make the, uh, DNA, you need uh, deoxythymidine triphosphate. So if you can't make deoxydine monophosphate, then you can't make deoxydine, um, deoxythymidine uh, triphosphate. And if you can't make deoxythymidine triphosphate, uh, then you can't actually copy DNA, and therefore it stops bacteria from being able to divide. So again, trimethoprin is what would be known as a bacteriostatic antibiotic, meaning that it stops uh, cell division rather than actually killing the bacteria that you already have. Okay, so how does it work? Well, basically, in bacteria, you have to synthesize a molecule known as tetrahydrofolate. Tetrahydrofolate. Folate, which is often abbreviated to THF for short, so tetrahydrofolate. And in order to synthesize this tetrahydrofolate, you reduce dihydrofolate. So the final stage, basically, in uh, the production of tetrahydrofolate is to take dihydrofolate, which is specifically, if you want to go get into details, it's 7, 8 dihydrofolate, and you have to uh, add two hydrogen uh, atoms on uh, to make uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, tetrahydrofolate, like so. Okay, and uh, the way you get these protons is you get them from reduced NADP, so reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Okay, so here is uh, reduced NADP. And don't be confused by uh, the fact that reduced NADP is written NADPH. That suggests that there's only one proton on the reduced NADP. This is incorrect. There are two protons and two electrons associated with each NADPH molecule, i.e. each reduced NADP molecule. And uh, basically what can happen is this: the two protons on this uh, reduced NADP molecule can be given up to the dihydrofolate molecule to make uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 tetrahydrofolate. In this process, the uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate will be returned to oxidized NADP, uh, which is written NADP with a plus like this. Okay, so uh, I'll just write the full name for NADP. Uh, it's nicotinamide, nicotinamide, uh, adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Okay, right, so um, you get this, these two protons and uh, the electrons associated with those protons from this reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. And once you've given them to tetrahydrofolate, uh, you can then use tetrahydrofolate to synthesize uh, a nucleotide that you need for DNA synthesis. Now, the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is important. It's sensibly called dihydrofolate reductase. Dihydrofolate reductase. Now, um, the reason it's called reductase is because it's reducing the um, dihydrofolate, the 7,8-dihydrofolate, into the 5,6,7,8-tetrahydrofolate. Because when you give protons with electrons, the electronegativity of protons are quite low, so uh, when you add on uh, protons with electrons onto this dihydrofolate molecule to make tetrahydrofolate, 
then uh, these protons are most likely not going to have the electrons close to them. Instead, whatever group you are adding the proton on it to is more likely to have the proton closer to it. So, in effect, you are giving electrons to those groups which you are adding the proton and the electron onto because the proton's electronegativity is low, basically. So, uh, reduction means uh, giving electrons to things, so that's why uh, this is a reduction reaction. So, dihydrofolate reductase is an enzyme which catalyzes this reduction of dihydrofolate, and it's often abbreviated to DHFR for dihydrofolate reductase. And indeed, dihydrofolate is often abbreviated to DHF. And we've already discussed that tetrahydrofolate, 5, 6, 7, 8 tetrahydrofolate is often abbreviated to THF. Right, now this enzyme, dihydrofolate reductase, is the target for trimethoprim. So trimethoprim is going to bind to this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, and it's going to stop it from working. So um, if you stop dihydrofolate reductase from working, you stop this reaction. So you accumulate dihydrofolate, and tetrahydrofolate levels go down in the cytoplasm of the bacterium. Now, tetrahydrofolate is essential for um, the production of deoxythymidine monophosphate. Okay, so let me talk about what deoxythymidine monophosphate is. So, um, DTMP, standing for deoxythymidine monophosphate, it is basically the thymine organic base deoxythymidine monophosphate, thymidine monophosphate, okay, it's basically the thymine organic base linked to deoxyribose and then with a phosphate group bound to it. Now this is not what we use to make DNA, instead we use, um, instead we use deoxythymidine triphosphate, but you get deoxythymidine uh, triphosphate from deoxythymidine monophosphate. So let me draw you the basic structure of this. So, if this is the ribose uh, pentagon ring here, and this is the fifth carbon of the ribose, then you have, well actually it should be deoxyribose. Okay, so this is the thymine, thymine organic base, so this is the thymine organic base here, bound to deoxyribose, which is the same as ribose, other than it has a hydroxyl group removed off this second carbon. So this second carbon basically has two hydrogens coming off it like so. So it, the difference between uh, deoxyribose and ribose is the, exactly this, that deoxyribose has two hydrogens coming off this uh, second carbon of the um, ribose ring, whereas ribose has a hydroxyl group and one hydrogen coming off there. Okay, so that's what it's deoxyphimidine. So, so far this is deoxyphimidine, this ribose bonded with um, this thymine organic base, that is deoxyphimine, uh, deoxyphimidine uh, there. Now, if you link off this um, fifth carbon, a phosphate group, which I will uh, denote by uh, a ball here, if you put a phosphate group off this um, fifth carbon, then you get deoxythymidine monophosphate. Okay? Now, this is what this is a nucleotide basically. This is a DNA nucleotide. In DNA, what we do is we have loads of these bound together in a great big polymer, and that's what DNA is. Now, we don't actually synthesize DNA from these. Instead, we synthesize DNA from deoxythymidine uh, triphosphate, which is this exact same nucleotide here, thymidine triphosphate. And that's what should have been there. That should have been a Y, thymidine uh, triphosphate. Okay, uh, which is the same nucleotide here, so it's the thymine with the deoxyribose, but this time, instead of just one phosphate group, you have three phosphate groups here. So if we wanted to turn this into deoxythymidine triphosphate, then we just have to add two extra phosphate groups here. So those are the phosphate groups you'd add to get deoxythymidine monophos uh, triphosphate. rather. So DTTP, this will be DTTP. 
P. Okay, and basically when you uh, when you synthesize DNA, you use this, and uh, what happens is that these two ends, these two terminal phosphate groups, uh, are cleaved off in the process when you make DNA, because obviously the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA only has a single phosphate group. So if I just quickly remind you of the structure of DNA, so basically DNA has these ribose sugars like so, with the fifth carbon there and then the phosphate group going up. And then this third carbon here is linked to the phosphate group from the fifth carbon of the uh, nucleotide below. So here's the nucleotide below. And both of these will have organic bases on. And then you'll have the uh, anti-parallel strand over here somewhere. Okay? Uh, so when you add on one of these nucleotides onto the growing organic, um, the growing, um, the growing DNA strand, what you will do is you'll cleave off these two terminal phosphates and then bind this uh, fifth, uh, this first phosphate group here onto the hydroxyl group of this third carbon here, and uh, the cleaving off of these two terminal phosphates, uh, which form a pyruvate, mo uh, sorry, not a pyruvate, a pyrophosphate molecule, which is just two phosphate groups linked together, that provides the energy for the joining on of this phosphate group to that third carbon's hydroxyl group. Okay, so in order to make deoxythymidine triphosphate, you have to just phosphorylate uh, deoxythymidine monophosphate. So basically you make uh, DTTP, uh, deoxythymidine triphosphate, from deoxythymidine monophosphate. So, if you can't make deoxythymidine monophosphate, you can't make deoxythymidine triphosphate. And if you can't make deoxythymidine triphosphate, well, it's one of the four organic bases in DNA. You can't make DNA without it. So you cannot replicate your genome if you do not have deoxythymidine triphosphate. And for deoxythymidine triphosphate, you need tetrahydrofolate, basically. So if we block this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme with this this antibiotic trimethoprim, uh, then we can stop uh, DNA replication within the bacteria. Now, when do cells need to replicate their DNA? Well, they need to replicate their DNA every time they divide in two. So, this enzyme, this drug rather, trimethoprim, is not going to kill the cell because DNA replication is not essential for life. Uh, for re reproduction it is, for splitting in half it is, uh, but just for that cell to live, it's not necessary. So this drug stops the cell dividing. It is a bacteriostatic antibiotic. It stops the bacteria cells from dividing, but it does not kill the ones that you already have. So again, it relies, giving this antibiotic to people relies on that person, that patient, having a healthy immune system so that the immune system can then kill the remaining bacteria uh, which, are, um, which are already there, basically. Okay, so the, this drug, trimethoprim, will stop the infection getting any worse, but it won't clear it. You need to have a healthy immune system. Basically, what it does is it gives the immune system a shot at clearing it, basically, because uh, it helps the immune system because it stops the infection from growing anymore uh, and therefore stops it getting out of hand to a stage where the immune system can't control it. And the immune system can gradually just pick off the every, each one of those remaining bacteria, basically.